Um, you know, it, it, it is a it's a competition that you sort of you win five matches, you can be a net bank champion. So uh, definitely, it does afford a bit of relief from the league. Um, it does allow us an opportunity um, to play against the best team in the country uh, for a cup competition. Um, obviously, the mindset going into it is, um, you know, we have to be positive uh, up against a lot, uh, against a quality team, quality players, you know, good form, unbeaten in the league, uh, you know, really good at home. Um, but, you know, we should not believe that we're going to make all the effort to get go to Pretoria without believing we can get a result. So our mindset has to be one of belief. Um, we know what we have to do to get a result against Sundowns. We have to play to our full potential. Um, and um, yeah, so we're looking forward to it. I think it's a, it's a nice team to play against. And you know, not many people are expecting us to get a result. So, uh, you know, all the pressure will be uh, on Sundowns and not us. So, you know, we can go there and we can hopefully play with some courage, some bravery, some freedom. Um, and at the same time, try and nullify the, the threats that they have all over the park. Um, good afternoon, Coach. Um, like you said, uh, um, going to Pretoria, uh, uh, very much as, as the underdogs, uh, does, that, does that tag suit you um, that in terms of playing with the freedom and, and, you know, and, and being able to express yourselves? And, and throughout the season, uh, you've, you've played very well. Just the, the final, the final you know, uh, strike or, or pass is not going going according to plan, that must give you confidence that you can go out there and, and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a side like Sunday. Uh, most definitely, Zahir. I think, um, you know, just going through, um, you know, some of the metrics and attacking and the stats um, that we, you know, we get from, from Instat and, and those type of things, it does definitely show that uh, we're doing well in, in many aspects. Uh, whether it's chances created, whether it's dribbles, you know, whether it's key passes, um, you know, we're up there in the top five in the league uh, in all those metrics. Um, but yes, what is missing is just that final sort of, um, you know, goal that we require. Um, you know, just looking at uh, at the log table, uh, unfortunately, you know, some people say the log table doesn't lie. Um, but we know that we are better than what the log table has shown. We've played consistently better than what the log table shows. Um, you know, in my opinion, out of the 14 games, there's only been maybe one and a half games where I felt we were totally outplayed uh, and didn't do ourselves any justice. Um, but besides that, I felt that we were in every other game. So we've shown that we are competitive. Uh, we have shown that uh, if we do play to our full potential and we do start taking our chances, um, you know, we have every opportunity to win any football match that we are in. And what we are disappointed also in is also some of the soft goals that we've given away. Um, if you analyze some of the goals we've scored this season have been really, really good goals um, created well from open play, from build up. But unfortunately, the goals we've conceded, um, you know, have been largely through our own sort of uh, decision making, poor judgment, mistakes. Um, so that's an area that we have to be on on our toes. We can't afford that against a good team like Sundowns. But yes, I do believe we can uh, do well against Sundowns. It is a cup competition. It's known for giant killing acts. That's what the Netbank's about. Unfortunately, we don't have the SAFA teams. But, um, you know, us beating Sundowns, I'm sure, will go down as a giant killing act. And that's what this cup's about. It's what gives us hope. It's what gives us dreams. We also dream of, of lifting the trophy and... Uh, you have to beat the best teams at some stage during the competition, and then why not in the first round? Coach, yes, I am, uh, Rob. Coach, normally, normally when you would enter the round of 32 after a heavy schedule in January, it would be a chance to give some of the fringe players a run. But when you're facing a team like Sundowns, uh, how do you approach the game? And just secondly, will Nathan be back? Um, yes, Rob, it does. Sometimes the, the, the cup does afford you that opportunity. Um, you know, but it, it is against sundowns, um, you know, uh, and we also only play our next league game in 10 days time. So, you know, if we were playing perhaps a league game on the weekend, you know, we do have some players on three yellows. We would maybe think of it differently, back to back games in three days. But I think there's enough time to, for us to recover after the sundowns game before our next league game. Um, and we want to do well. I think one of the targets we set ourselves out at the beginning of the season was, was to do well in, in, in the cup competition. Um, and we still have that ambition. So, you know, we want to put out what we believe is the best squad that can do the job against uh, Sundowns. 
Um, but yes, there, there is opportunity for one or two French players that deserve an opportunity to get a run. Uh, and yes, Nathan is, is over his suspension, so uh, Nathan will be uh, available for the match. Uh, Steve, the, the great search of any coach is to find a good goal-scoring striker. And there was quite a bit of excitement with the Argentinian and the Nigerian that you signed this season. But what's, what's the jury now on them after a few months? Um, particularly given how Dingba missed against Kaiser Chiefs, uh, we can see his natural pace. And Mendieta doesn't seem to get past the first challenge. You know, what's your what's the jury on those two guys? Um, Mark, I think starting with Stanley, I think um, you know he's he's had uh, he scored three goals for us this season. He's he's also had uh, assists. Um, so you know he's I think he's played his part. Um, you know, obviously the goal and the chance against Chiefs he did not take, but I think he's been integral in our attacking play. Um, you know, the data shows that his expected goals is the highest in the team currently, uh, as well as assists. So, you know, one mustn't sort of lose the fact that he also um, only played football in sort of February of, of last year throughout the lockdown. Um, so he had been seven, eight months without playing regularly. Um, and as we all know, you know, it takes foreigners um, a while to settle in. You know, that first six months is, is, is never... You know, they don't just start up and running. I mean, if you even look at quality players uh, like Serena and that, you know, it, it took them a while to get going. So, yeah, we're confident that Stanley um, he will do well for us and continue to, to provide and score goals for us as well as assists. Um, with Mendieta, he is a class player. He's, he is quality. Unfortunately, he's just had a really horrid season in terms of knocks and niggles um, and just hasn't got the momentum going when when he, when he did arrive and, and he was sharp. He, he scored on debut and, you know, created opportunities for us in other games where we scored. He came on for 20 minutes against Celtic and created four chances for us. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, he's had niggles and knocks and uh, just hasn't had the uh, opportunity to have a good run. Um, so yeah, we're also very confident that when he is up and running and uh, he's fully fit and gets uh, games under the belt, um, he will be, um, you know, a real quality um, addition to our squad who will add huge value. Hi, Steve. Um, I just have a, a bit more of a general question about the lack of, of fans in stadiums. Do you think the players are now, so now that we're sort of six months on from the restart in, in August, that, that players are more used to it? Does it still affect players at all? Does it still feel a bit like training games or is everybody kind of over that now and, and moved on to the new normal? Um, it's, it's a difficult question to answer. I think uh, I say that because I don't have a, a clear-cut answer for you. Um, you know, just my gut feel is telling me that, you know, the players have sort of um, become sort of accustomed to it. Um, without the fans, I think uh, you don't hear them speak about it as much as, for example, you know, in the beginning when, when we went into the bubble and we couldn't have fans I think it's that acceptance has taken its part. Um, but at the same time, I think, you know, sport is entertainment. Um, footballers are entertainers. Um, you know, they work hard every single day at training and, and really, you know, get themselves into positions to play games and want to showcase their ability and skills and that in front of fans. Um, and it's different, you know, knowing fans are watching at home uh, on TV as to having the fans at the stadium. Um, you know, we've, we've now gone many seasons as Stellenbosch uh, without a real home ground. Um, we were very sort of excited to, to have secured Donnie Craven as a home venue. And we knew that we would be able to draw a good crowds. Um, you know, we were aiming to be in the top four or five teams in the country with in terms of crowd attendance. I think you know, we can do what uh, Maritzburg were doing on a Friday evening. Um, and we were looking forward to having those sort of supporters behind behind the team. We've got some, you know, local players in the team. Um, so definitely, I do think in the back of their mind, the players do miss the fans and would love to be playing in front of fans. Um, but there is a degree of acceptance, um, especially when you don't really know when, you know, we're sort of all looking at it's most likely going to be next season. Hopefully, uh, you know, cross our fingers that at least by then we can have the fans back. So... Yeah, difficult question. Um, it's, it's a bit of both. There's acceptance, but there's also a longing, you know, to, to be playing in front of the support. I just wanted to check here. You've got a, 
an experience of this competition. I remember in 2009 with the University of Pretoria, you reached the final then, you lost to Swallows. Have you shared your experience to the players? And also, I was checking out your record early against Mamelo Sanders. It doesn't look very good and you, you have you been won the last five games. Doesn't that work against you, coach? Uh, I don't think so, because I think uh, anywhere in life, there's things do change and the runs do come to an end. Um, and they say that you drew a result eventually. Um, so, um, you know, we, we drew a big performance against Sundowns. I think uh, last season on two occasions, we, we, we really played well against them. There was an occasion at uh, Athlone where we lost 1-0, but I felt that we were really well within the game and could have got more out of the game. And uh, we also played them at Loftus last season where we got an unfortunate red card a penalty that was given for a dive uh, in the box, which led to them ultimately winning. But even in that game, I felt we were unlucky. Um, we you know we took them to the wire. We, we, we caused them many problems. So, uh, you know, yes, the record doesn't read well, but uh, there is a belief that we can uh, get a win. Um, you know, it is a cup game. It is nothing to lose. Um, and yeah, it is well known uh, that uh, the cup, as I said earlier, is a giant killing sort of cup where sometimes these situations are set up for teams like us to, to, to get past Sundowns. But, you know, in saying that, uh, Sundowns are playing really well. They're unbeaten in the league. They, you know, they've scored 24 odd goals between the front three. They've got 17 goals. Um, you know, they're able to sign a player like Rashin Derek to, to, you know, join them. Uh, so, yeah, they're a very formidable team, quality, depth, uh, all around, playing at home. You know, so it's one of those games where it's either going to be a big upset and we're going to really give a good account of ourselves. Um, but if we don't play well and we, we allow them the time and the space, it can also become a very difficult day, like uh, Chip experienced yesterday. Um, you know, we've got to avoid that at all costs by making sure we pitch for the game and we play really well. Uh, just an update on Solly, as well as Mediator, injury-wise. And then, uh, as far as I know, you do not have a transfer ban. So, and especially looking at your squad, um, will you be going into the market? Or, I mean, 15th of June is around the corner, 15th of Feb is around the corner. Um, yes, just to answer your, two, your first question. Um, Solly is basically integrating back in team training. He, you know, he trained again today with the squad. Um, so he is uh, showing sort of improvement. Um, we're targeting him to be available for our, our TTM match. Um, you know, we don't want to rush him. Um, he's had some big injuries uh, in the past. So, you know, we need to strengthen him. We need to make sure that we get him strong. Um, so, yeah, he should be available by the TTM match. Uh, Mendieta is also integrating back on training. Um, we're looking for him to be, you know, 90-minute match ready and fit for the Arrows match. Um, so, you know, he may be part of the squad uh, for the Sundowns with a view of maybe getting a couple of minutes. Um, but, yeah, both players, we're targeting uh, Arrows for, for Mendieta and TTM for Solid to be back, um, and it would be good for us to have a full squad available. We, we do have a small squad of, of only 24 players, which includes three goalkeepers. So when we do have injuries, um, you know, it, it does stretch our resources in terms of player availability. Um, so, yeah, we just have to be really wise in, in, in bringing them back, making sure that they don't break down again. Um, to answer your second question, uh, Stephen, we, as a rule, we're not a club that, that you know, want to just go out in the transfer window and, um, you know, get people for the sake of solving, um, you know, certain problems that we believe we within ourselves and, and, and working hard at certain things we can solve within. Um, but at the same time, um, I've always maintained that every window allows a club to strengthen your squad. So if the right play and the right opportunity and the right circumstance was made available, um, we would look at it. Um, but it's not that we are sort of you know, making a concerted effort. We believe in the players that we have. Uh, we do have a young uh, striking force in terms of Les, Ashley Dupre and Lele to Scalum, uh, you know, among Soli Kunyedi. Um, and, you know, short-term gains and short-term buying 
players to, to change things, I don't think is the answer. I do see them as the future um, of this club. I do see them later on in their football career being amongst the top goal scorers in the league. Um, they're just lacking the experience and maturity right now and the composure at times, which comes with a lack of experience. But if you don't play them and you don't believe in them and don't give them the opportunity, you know, you just delay that experience and gaining that maturity. So we, we have trust in, in, in them and what they can do and, and will achieve. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. It's, it's not a no that we won't bring anyone in, um, but at the same time, it's not as if we are panicking and needing to go out in the market to, to, to look at um, that situation. Uh, yes. you've, you've partly answered the one in terms of uh, any possibility of incomings. And uh, are you are you worried about the outgoing? So, well, obviously, we've seen sundowns, you know, they're blowing everyone uh, in, in, in the market in terms of, you know, the latest signing, the latest signing, Roshin. Are you not worried that uh, the that, that, that duo that you just named now, there might be, you know, other big teams are circling in and around them? And secondly, Coach, you've already said uh, you've played 14 games. What is your report card in terms of the first uh, half of the season? Are you happy? Do you think you could have, would have gotten more points? Are you just, you know, satisfied with what's report? And I think you're on, what, 15 or 18 points. Are you happy uh, with how far you've come this season in terms of the first half of the season? Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, just to answer your second question, um, I think we we disappointed um, in terms of our points tally. We we believe strongly that um, you know we've in many occasions and certain situations that we handle better. We we should have been in a better position. I think the type of football we're playing, um, you know, we have definitely improved as a squad from last season this time. Um, but uh, in saying that, uh, you know, there are certain things that that we have to correct immediately um, to ensure. You know, even just a single match against Arrows, our next league game, you know, becomes a crucial game. If you, you win that, you're on 18, you know, after 15 games, it sets you up the, the foundation to then push on to the 36, 40 mark is there. If you don't win the game and you're on 15, then conversely, you know, you, you, you then have to be looking behind you at teams below you. So it is fine margins. Um, we generally are happy with, with the progress of the team. Um, it's just now finding ways, you know, just from a technical and tactical point to convert a lot of the good performances into three pointers and not draws and one or two draws that we should have won the match. So um, we're aware of where we're at and what we need to achieve and we're working hard at it. Um, and the second part, obviously, um, you know, there's always a risk of players doing well at, uh, in your club that uh, people will be, you know, looking out for them. Um, myself as a coach, us as a club, we've always maintained the stance that, um, you know, if players are doing well enough and deserve an opportunity, you know, elsewhere, whether it be a perceived bigger club or in Europe, um, you know, we will provide them those opportunities. But at the same time, um, you know, all our young players are secured for on long-term contracts. And um, I believe that there's still a lot of work to be done uh, for them individually and at this club, um, before, you know, there's any sort of thoughts or entertaining um, of them moving anywhere. So we have our own ambitions as a club. We, we want to also be a club that's competing at the, the upper end of the league. Uh, we have a plan and a strategy in place for that uh, in the coming years. Uh, and some of those players will be integral part of, of, of us getting to there. So it's, it's just really a good balance of not losing your best players and that compromises you. Um, but at the same time, also providing opportunity, you know, for our players, which is also part of our club strategy. Um, Steve, just going back to Robin's question about 2009, is there any little secret to a giant killing run? I mean, how did you, was it with Amatux, did you just ride the wave or did you engineer a couple of things along the way? Can you give us a bit of a recipe? <laughs> Um, Mark, you know, we in those, in those days, we had the preliminary round. We were in the NFD, obviously. We played... Uh, um, the name of the team, Blackburn, um, in East London. And uh, we were very fortunate to come away with a win in that game. Uh, it went to extra time and we won it 3-2. Um, so firstly, no one sort of, you know, knows. And then from there, we obviously had the great run in terms of beating Chiefs, beating, uh, you know, Celtic, beating Ajax. Um, and then ultimately failing in the final. But we also had a really good squad. You know, players have gone on to achieve really great things and played in Europe 
Um, so we had a, had a good squad, young, energetic, nothing to lose. There was a no fear attitude about the team. And uh, I think we also just rode the momentum, you know, every time you win a game and, you know, there's just more belief. There's, there's just, you know, we just really, part of it was riding the wave. Part of it was having a really good squad. A little bit of luck was involved. Um, and yeah, it, it was just, uh, you know, something special in, in, in my career to have been part of and a lot of the players being part of it. And one yearns for that same sort of situation to occur again. Um, and every year you've got that hope and that dream. I mean, all 32 teams are wanting to win the Nedbank Cup. So are we. Um, we probably have the biggest challenge of, of all this coming Wednesday. Um, but we've, as I said, you know, why not? Why not go there and cause a big upset and showcase what we can do? And, and we are brewing and there's something special and we're on the cusp of uh, some special things. Um, you, can, you can quote me on this in a couple of weeks, months time, but um, you know, we, we will at some stage surprise many teams with big performances and put teams to bed. Um, yeah, but we just got to keep believing that we can do it and working towards it. Uh, Coach? Could you just uh, speak a little bit about the importance of someone like Alan Robertson and, and just how much he's improved as a player under you? I, I know he had a lot of critics in his early days at Tux and at Amazulu, but he's put in some real man-of-the-match performances this season. Um, yes, Rob. I think, um, you know, sometimes some players are never as fortunate as others are, and are born with just natural ability and natural talent. Um, you know, and... and he, he's had to work for everything that he's achieving today. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes it, it takes longer than other times to, to, to sort of reach that potential and, and get the penny to drop. So, you know, Alan, um, I'm very fond of because of, of his, his commitment, his attitude, his work ethic. Um, you know, he's a South African international, played at under 17 level, went overseas, spent uh, three to four years playing in an academy there. So, you know, he's got a really, really good football intelligence, intelligence about him. He's technically very gifted. And maybe what was lacking was uh, just, you know, maybe his physique, um, his, his physical output. Um, but he made a decision to himself that he would just outwork everybody at training, do the extra, um, you know, invest in his, in his body um, through uh, training, nutrition, um, and uh, he's reaping the rewards thereof. Um, you know, I think, in my opinion, he's been one of our most consistent performers in the bubble uh, last season as well as this season. Um, you know, he's ranking amongst the top defenders in the league and in many uh, defensive actions. Uh, and yeah, that credit just goes. And, and, and the good thing about him, he's also off the field. He's a leader. You know, he participates in discussions. Um, you know, he's got an open mind. He watches all our games. Uh, he watches his performance, um, you know, he gives feedback at training. So uh, he's a vice captain of the club currently, um, together with Lee Langefeld. Um, and uh, yeah, credit to him for, you know, what another stat, what not many people are aware of, he's the most capped Stellenbosch footballer um, at the club. So uh, credit to him uh, and long may it continue.